Sarah McDermid, who emigrated with her family in 1987 from the Scottish Highlands to Australia, left her home on Sky Road, Frankston at 7.30am on July the 11th. The young woman worked as a clerk at an insurance company in Melbourne. That morning she parked her car at the local train station and headed off to work as normal. She had plans, as she did every week, to play tennis with some friends after work. Sarah finished work at around 5pm and headed off to what was then known as Flinders Park in Batman Avenue. The friends then had a couple of drinks in the lounge and headed back towards Richmond Railway Station. The 23-year-old had left her car parked near her home in the parking lot of Cannanook train station. The three friends had just missed the train, so ended up getting a slightly later one, and both her friends alighted at Bomb Beach. Sarah stayed on the train for a further two stops, until the train reached Cannanook Railway Station at 10.20pm. Once the train arrived, Sarah departed and headed for her car, walking along the poorly lit car park. She would never be seen again. It was normal for Sarah to return home between 10.30 and 10.45pm, so when she still wasn't home by 1am, her family was extremely worried. Her younger brother, who was 21 at the time, drove to Cannanook Station in the hope his sister would arrive on the last Frankston-bound train. Sadly, she wasn't on it. What he did find was his sister's car, still locked in the parking lot. It was unlike Sarah not to come home, however they figured she could have possibly decided to stay with a friend. But when they called her work the next morning to check in, and she hadn't showed up, they reported her missing. They knew at this point something was seriously wrong. When the police arrived at the train station, what they found was worrying. Blood was found next to a red 1978 Honda Civic. More blood spots were found leading to the bushes. Police also found two parallel running drag marks that had slightly indented the dirt. More blood was found on the ground in the bushes. It looked like whoever had been attacked near the car had been dragged over to the bushes. Police also found a green coloured lighter lying on the ground. The lighter belonged to Sarah. Later, at least one witness came forward who said they saw Sarah get off the train and cross the footbridge to the parking lot. A woman's voice was heard shouting, give me back my keys, followed by stop fooling around, and then shortly afterwards, a woman's scream, but no one saw anything. An extensive 21-day air, sea and land search involving more than 250 police produced no results and without any further leads, the case went cold. Over the years, there has been numerous theories as to what happened to Sarah that night. One of them was that she was another victim of the Frankston serial killer that terrorised the area a few years later. But he denied any involvement and Sarah disappeared prior to his killing spree. Another theory was that she was killed by killer prostitute Jodie Jones. Jones was a prostitute that had been convicted and sentenced to 12 years in prison in 1985. She had killed a man with her stilettos when she had jumped off a wall onto the victim's chest. Jones had been released early and was not in prison at the time of Sarah's disappearance. Jones had also been convicted of car theft, prostitution, burglary and drug offences. On July the 23rd, 1990, Jones was arrested and interviewed in connection with the disappearance after several friends came forward stating that she had confessed to murdering McDermid, accompanied by two men. Jones denies all this information, 
stating that she doesn't know why her friends would say such things, and Jones was never charged with the crime. She died aged 26 of a heroin overdose in a St Kilda motel room just 14 months after the disappearance. Another theory is that it was a robbery gone wrong and the perpetrator panicked and killed her. But with such little evidence to work with and no body being recovered, that's all they are, theories. An inquest in 1996 determined Sarah McDermid met with foul play that night by a person or persons unknown. In 2010, marking the 20th anniversary of her disappearance, her family and friends visited Cannonook Railway Station to leave wreaths at a memorial established there. Her family also announced they had created a website, Not Alone, which was designed to help other families who found themselves in a position similar to them. No new information has come through as to what happened to Sarah that night, despite a $1 million reward being available. And as of 2023, Sarah remains missing and her case unsolved.